obviously back uh, back on the road here, three of our next four, but obviously uh, first up here at Wisconsin. So getting ready for uh, those uh, those guys here and heading out today. Yeah. <clears throat> at Wisconsin home against Purdue, you know, and you're not going to enter a game with this mindset, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people outside, you know, are looking at those games not expecting you guys to win them. Uh, is, is there anything freeing about that, you know, sort of that playing with nothing to lose, or does it change nothing in terms of, of, of your mentality? Or yeah, no, I think, I, I think um, I'd be interested to ask our, our players that. Um, uh, you know, I think the reality is, you know, um, I think that that can be a help at, at times. But, uh, you know, you're really just focused on learning from what we did in the Wisconsin game good that we can do better. And uh, maybe where there's some, some things we need to tweak or change going into that. And then after that, tackling, um, you know, this, this Purdue team and trying to figure out the best way to, to – um, Put a game plan in for those guys. So you know, two terrific teams. I know Wisconsin's had some bumps in the road here with playing three. I think they're, they've uh, played three out of four on the road too, and then their one home game was Purdue. Um, so I know uh, they'll certainly be hungry. We're hungry, and um, you know, should be a great atmosphere there. What, what do you think this team ha has learned from this? You know, this tough road stretch you guys have had, this road losing streak, and, and maybe can apply and, and make things different on you know tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know if it's anything other than uh, what we've talked about before. Uh, I didn't sense that we played with a lack of poise, you know, at Iowa, but you know, I think we did uh, at Northwestern. So we made some, I think, improvements there. But you know, on the road, you just you've got to do what you do. You got to do it at a better level, at a higher level, because you know the home team is is going to op be operating at a higher level. So that's I think the biggest thing for our kids uh, to take from these last couple opportunities. It, is is that where the way you played against Maryland could maybe um, follow you on, on the road, given that different opponents, different profiles, and all that? But like you talk about, just focusing on like the things that you do well. To show that toughness and to show ways to close that game out, are those things? Do those can you replicate those more? I, yeah, I mean, I hope so, and I hope that um, you know we can take some of the things we did there, particularly late in the last uh, you know 15 minutes of the game, where it was you know back and forth, and at times you know didn't look good. I thought our guys played with tremendous uh, offensive poise there to be down three to make to have that possession that was just a, a terrific possession by our guys where the Roddy kicked it to Bruce showed great poise great maturity you're going to need that in bunches on the road uh, when there's you know the crowd but you need it at home too so hopefully we can um, you know take those moments where we just we just played and we played a, with an aggressiveness that I think we lacked a little bit against Indiana uh, and uh Hopefully that can help us here moving forward. You guys have had opportunities where you've had a three that could maybe tie it, send it to yeah. overtime, win, and they just haven't fallen. And it yeah. seemed like that Bruce three was the first one, maybe all season, yeah. that, that has fallen. Does does can? It's easy to make them too much of one shot, one game, whatever. But how important was a shot like that to show that in a yeah. crucial situation, someone can hit a three? Yeah, I think what we're trying to emphasize as much as anything is just keep taking those good ones like the one Jameson had to win it I wouldn't have I could have won it actually um was a was a good look um the one he had in regulation I believe it was regulation off of transition um where he shot faked and sidestepped to his right was a great look so I think as much as anything we're trying to just emphasize keep taking those um because those are the right plays at, at that moment and you know play fearless in those moments and just keep taking them we hear about in in all sports, uh, you go on the road. It's just you and your team, yeah. And how that can be kind of rallying. Obviously, you guys have done this plenty of times this year. But coming off a win, do you think that that kind of mentality, similar to Andy's question, but that kind of us against the world mentality, even more, can can help in these some of these road games, not just tomorrow, yeah. but down the line. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I think we've got some some obviously really really challenging road games coming up where we're going to get tested at a high level whether it's you know you just look at these 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 remaining road games but yeah i i will see what the mentality and the fight of of our kids are um you know i think that's that's what uh, we're we're all anxious to see you know what is our fight our poise our mentality our togetherness um in those environments that that uh 
um, we're going to face. <clears throat> I think it's pretty clear if you get Jamison, Roddy, and Bruce all going in a game, you guys have a pretty good shot of winning, right? What is <coughs> What are the conversations? What, what does it take? Because it hasn't been consistent that yeah. all three have had on nights. Right. And I don't just necessarily mean they're all scoring, but kind yep. of all the things they contribute. How, how do you kind of get the three of them maybe going together? If, if well, I, I think it's that, but I also think we need some other guys to help in, in that regard. The, the, you know, the focus for the other team can't just be on those three guys. You know, they're going to command a lot of attention regardless. That's where, you know, Evan making a three the other day was important for us. You know, maybe Evan getting in double figures, Felix helping us like he did maybe against Iowa where he was able to get the double figures. You're going to need other guys to be able to step up, a, a Devin, a, just other guys to be able to step up um, because I don't know that it can be just those three guys. You know, maybe late there's a, a focus around those three guys, but um, – Throughout the course of the game, we're going to need more from more guys. Chris, on the radio, you talked about how Felix needs to get his hands up more and not foul as much. How has he responded to the last couple of games with dealing with foul trouble when that really was not an issue most yeah, of the it wasn't. season? it wasn't. I think we just got to keep working through film with him, showing him, and he's just he's got to play with more discipline Yeah, because he had done a really good job not getting into foul trouble. Um, he's, got to, he's got to play with more discipline, and um, and he knows that. He's, he's, man, he's such a great kid. And he wants to do well. He knows that. He just gets – he's just got to get – he's young. He's got to get better at that. He's got to get better at playing more discipline one-on-one. And uh, also, he's gotten some fouls as a secondary defender where he didn't need to. He turned his body a couple times where he could have been vertical and not gotten the foul call. And then with Evan, it seems like he's kind of evolved his offensive game as the season's gone on, just more aggressive. Yeah. Even when he's not making shots, just yeah. getting to the whole – um, you mentioned the time and space three he had. What have you seen from his game in terms of on that end of the court helping you guys out? Well, I love uh, how much better he's gotten and going to continue to get. Um, you know, you got four sophomores in the starting lineup, and I think they all have a, a fair amount of upside. But he's he's got <clears throat> he's got high upside, um, as does a guy like Devin Royal and, and other guys. But. Uh, I think he's gotten really better offensively. I do want him to take some time in space threes. And I think for um, um, for him, he's just in a really good, confident offensive rhythm right now. Our challenge for him is I think he needs to be better defensively in some areas. Um, and uh, that's what our focus has been with him. Chris, how do you uh, rest your guys and appropriately handle practice after such a long game that clearly yeah. took a lot of energy out of your guys? Yeah, we did. You know, a lighter, it's such a quick turnaround, so you're balancing that with not, you know, force-feeding too much information just today. So we did need to get some things done yesterday, and uh, we, we did that. Um, I think we got some things done yesterday in terms of game plan prep. Um, but uh, certainly I was aware of the, the amount of wear and tear on their legs after a double overtime game. And... You talked about aggressiveness, but also discipline. How do you coach that? Because it seems like they were very aggressive down the stretch on Saturday, but at times that also led to a lot of whistles. Yeah, I think defensively we just we got to play with better technique. Um, we got to play with better technique, and they you know they did some they did some good things uh, late uh, as well, Maryland that is to to make it difficult for us. We just got to play with better technique. Uh, I thought Roddy did a phenomenal job not fouling, uh, but got to play with that better technique. But I, I did really like our poise and aggressiveness offensively um, in the last, you know, 15 minutes. The first game you guys played against Wisconsin, uh, Gail and Thornton both seemed like they struggled a little bit. Uh, just what was Wisconsin able to do with those matchups, and, and how can you help them kind of overcome that, I suppose, and play their best game uh, this time around? Yeah, I think they um, – they're really good defensively, as you know, Steve. And they they just, um, you know, after watching it, I thought we we got some some decent looks. Um, you know, we had some plays there where you know I think I think Bruce uh, might have missed a couple front ends of one on ones there, which you know he's going to make more than that. Roddy had an open three on the semi transition, uh, but it was wide open late. That if you just make a couple of those, I'm fine with him taking. Um, but I think we've got to figure out some ways we can maybe free those guys up. And um, 
I think at times if we look at a lineup where the floor is a little bit more open, that might help those guys. Um, so potentially playing um, some lineups where there's just a little more space on the floor. Scotty Milton, it felt like a couple months ago he was starting to get into a rhythm where he could help you 10, 12, 14 minutes a game, yeah. whatever. And he's missed a couple games here in January, uh, injury, yeah. whatever else, and uh, didn't play a whole lot there the other day. Just uh, wh where's where's he at and how can he kind of get back into the, the flow? Because it feels like if you got just a little bit more help here down the stretch, yeah. how, how big it would be? It would be big. I do think having another perimeter – whether that's Scotty, along with Dale, whether that's Scotty or Bowen, uh, to give us some um, uh, shooting, you know, and Scotty's a terrific defender. You know, I think he's just got to work through the ups and downs of a freshman, and we got to try to help him with that. But I agree with having another guy or two, uh, you know, Dale and, and one of those guys that could provide some. Uh, some scoring for us and shooting is going to be really important for us down the stretch. So you were so excited to get to work on Sunday, you couldn't keep your foot off the gas yeah, pedal? Yeah, Saturday. Is that what I heard? Yeah, Saturday. Sa Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday morning. He got me uh, He got me pretty good, and I deserved it. I deserved it. So um, I was anxious to get into work and watch a couple more hours of film and yeah, so I didn't. I had no idea how fast I was driving. You'll have to explain that to me one day. I'm never in that much of a hurry to get to work. But <laughs> what what were you b besides the film? I guess I thought you had said Sunday. But so what was what was the the day at work like yesterday after you saw the win yeah. and you got to feel that for your guys and yeah. that you could just tell and it felt. I don't know if you agree. It felt like you your team was going to win that game. Maybe that's because the lead wasn't dwindling. You actually made up a 10-point deficit, yeah. and they seemed a little bit – they seemed way more locked into everybody, I'm sure, to you guys in the second half. Yeah. No, I think – I think um, it was good. It's always better after a win, but I, I would also say you're, you're – as a coach, you're really, you know, trying to focus on learning from, from that game as well, learning on what we can do better. But you also – you know, we had a good time watching some of the clips in the film and, you know, the, those guys celebrating. Those always moments you want your guys to, to kind of enjoy. But, you know, you feel the, the the pressure as a coach to, okay, let's, especially with the quick turnaround, let's make sure we're learning from some of these things here and keep growing and improving. Because I do think we've seen some growth in these guys as hard as, you know, the Indiana game was or whatever. You know, I think we've seen some growth. And that's just the, the biggest focus for us right now. You were saying, and you've said this to us before, but the the lack of Saturday games, and that you talk to the Big Ten. What are those conversations like? What, what feedback do you get when you try and they're trying push to, for those? You know, they'll they'll tell you that every every coach would prefer that, every administration would prefer that. Gene and I both um, put put a call in in the off season before the the new schedule was put out, <clears throat> and because um, last year we had hardly any, um, so. You know, Saturday games slash weekend games. Saturday would be the preference, but slash weekend games. You know, it's just a different vibe everywhere on every on every campus. It's just a different, but certainly different here. You saw the energy of the crowd uh, on Saturday. It's just it's just different. So, yeah, I've um, they've been receptive. Our, our the office does a really good job in terms of scheduling, uh, and they they listen to you even when you're you're not particularly happy. They listen to you, and that's always appreciated. You know, you mentioned Wisconsin's recent struggles. How do you anticipate them coming out of the gates tomorrow night back on their home court? Hungry, you know, like everybody, you know, any time this year. They're a proud group. They're, <clears throat> you know, I think the thing of them, they're, they're obviously really old. They added an impact transfer, uh, as we all know, and he's a really good player. But they're really old, and they are a really proud group. And uh, Wall's been one of my, you know, uh, favorite players to compete against be just because of his competitive spirit is just phenomenal he is a just he is a a, a he's an absolute warrior um, so they're going to come out hungry I think our group will come out hungry and um, and we'll go from there any yeah one well, Adam mind. Um, I'm not sure if you expected Dale to play the most that he played all season when a game goes on like that and you're kind of feeling that stuff out like what is that like in in a game kind of evaluating saying all right well you know, he only played a couple minutes last game we're gonna go to him for 30 yeah. this game yeah um 
You know, it was a combination of foul trouble and then wanting to maybe look at some closing lineups, uh, as we've talked about, that were maybe a little bit different. So it was a combination of those two things. But I'll just say that Dale's approach in practice has been good. His attitude for a couple weeks now has been good. And uh, that's given me a lot of confidence as a coach to be able to play him. And then um, the way, obviously, Klesman's a very different player yeah. than Jameer Young, but the way that Roddy was able to guard Jameer and, and frustrate him in some ways, are things that he did in that matchup replicable as you go play a Klesman, given that they're different players? They have two really good wings, so that's what makes it difficult because they've got three really good guards. They start re three really good guards. So figuring out the matchup, uh, the matchups is something we're, we're working on, but it's hard to put him just on one guy because they've got really talented group. I guess just mean I just mean in general, maybe not specifically Klesman, but him being able to guard somebody oh, yeah. like the defensive yeah. confidence he must take from a matchup like that. Yeah, no, is that replicable no matter who he's playing? It is, it is, and he's just got to accept that challenge. And I've got to be able to give him more breaks throughout the game, Adam, because he he can wear down pretty quickly after like three and a half or four minutes. So I've got to be able to get him some spells because of the load he's carrying there.